Waziri, Wabari, Utamaduni, Sana, Namecheso, Meshmiwa Nape, Nauye, Umku Wa Mukoa, Waurusha, Meshmiwa John Mongela, Regional Director for UNESCO. I don't know how to say that in Kiswahili, so forgive me. Uh, Hubert uh, Gaijun. Uh, officials from the government of Tanzania, uh, locally and centrally, members of the diplomatic corps joining us today, representatives of civil society organizations, religious leaders, and most importantly of all, journalists, editors, media professionals from all over Africa, uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you this morning. And I say that from my heart because I stand before you today as a diplomat, but I was once a journalist. I once did your work. Uh, and it, it is therefore a special honor to be with you today to mark this World Press Freedom Day. And incredibly that this is the inaugural meeting, uh, Africa-wide meeting to mark that day. Uh, and it is a great privilege to be here. And may I start um, by saying just how uplifting it is, Your Excellency, Madam President, to see you here celebrating this event, giving your support, personal support, to the global cause of promoting press freedom. And Your Excellency, your presence is uplifting for many reasons, particularly as it's on Eid, a very special day. Um, so thank you for that. But let me just highlight a, a few of those reasons uh, why it's uplifting. First, as we've been hearing the indispensable role that a free and independent press plays in enabling countries to thrive economically and politically. A seminal study some years ago found that countries with an independent media are less prone to famine because the populations are alerted to the upcoming food shortages earlier and because the governments of those countries take earlier action. In other words, there is evidence that supports the, uh, the point that press freedom actually saves lives. Research also shows that press freedom delivers a wide range of developmental benefits, increased political participation, reduced corruption, more effective delivery of services, enhanced subjective well-being across the population. Indeed, it's widely accepted, and I don't think anyone in this room would disagree with this, that an independent media, uh, 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 that, a, uh, that a, uh, a population that is informed by a free and independent media is a population that is empowered, empowered to make use of new ideas, create opportunities, and importantly, protect itself, protect itself from disinformation and extremist perspectives. So let me pay tribute now to the work of the journalists, editors, and all those within media organizations in this room today and all around the world. Um, the work you do is not only essential to a functioning uh, democracy, it's a foundation for prosperity and social well-being. And yet, and yet, as we've already heard, despite the many self-evident benefits that a free and independent, independent press brings to countries, media freedom globally is deteriorating. Censorship, harassment, attacks on journalists, they're all increasing. A growing number of governments are using restrictive laws to stifle expression, curtail media independence. And women journalists, women journalists, as we've heard, are being disproportionately targeted by harassment and sexist hate speech, much of it online. And the symptoms of this global malaise are all too common. Media houses pressured into running only government-approved stories, independent news outlets being shut down, journalists having to self-censor. And in the worst cases, media professionals paying for their commitment with their liberty or their lives. 55 journalists and media workers were killed last year. And the number of journalists, this is shocking, the number of journalists jailed for their work is globally, is at a global high today. So what can we do about these deeply concerning trends? Well, we can take a stand together. We can redouble our efforts to protect media freedom 
both in our own countries and internationally. And we've heard from the uh, African Union, the, here in Africa, the, the African Commission on Human Rights has established very clear, very solid uh, standards through its de declaration of principles on freedom of expression and access to information. Um, and there are many instruments here in Africa, agreed across Africa, that support press freedom. And what we need to see is more governments using these as their, their guiding lights uh, in terms of regulation and the way they handle the media. At a global level, for the past two years, the UK has, along with Canada, co-chaired a new initiative designed to protect media freedom. It's called the Media uh, Freedom Coalition, Media Freedom Coalition, and it's grown quickly. It's grown to have a membership of more than 50 countries, uh, all working together through this, uh, this initiative to advocate for media freedom, uh, protect journalists, and to hold to account those who harm journalists for doing their job. And as part of that initiative, the UK has worked very closely, I'm pleased to say, with UNESCO and Canada to establish the Global, global Media Defence Fund. And this fund provides financial and legal support to journalists, their families, and civil society, as well as training. The UK has committed three million pounds, or more than 10 billion shillings, uh, to fund that uh, effort over the past three years. Thank you. Another way we can work together to reverse the negative trends is to endorse, recognize, and encourage uh, other countries to emulate those countries that are bucking that global trend and moving in a positive direction on media freedom. Uh, and in light of that, it's fitting that this event is taking place here in Tanzania this year, where under the leadership of Her Excellency the President, we have recently seen uh, some very positive steps, including some long-standing bans on media outlets being reversed and a review being initiated into media laws, including the Media Services Act. And it's been heartening, too, to see Tanzania accept uh, some of the recommendations on media freedom in the recent UN Human Rights Council Universal uh, Periodic Review. Your Excellency, development partners welcome these steps and rest assured that we will not only support Tanzania on this journey, uh, but be hoping that other countries in the region and beyond will follow the example uh, you and your government are setting. And with that in... And with that in mind, um, we would note that it would offer inspiration and encouragement to other countries to see Tanzania consider at least the possibility of joining the Media Freedom Coalition, if not now, then at some point in the not-too-distant future. Over the past three days, we've seen the commitment and passion of those who work in the media on display at this event. For their sake, for the sake of citizens across Africa and the world, the UK proud media freedom that is so essential to all of the fundamental freedoms on which our collective success depends. So, hashtag Uhuru Wahabari, Eid Mubarak, Asantini Sana Kwa Kunisikaliza, Mungu Ibariki, Tanzania. Thank you.